Hey, yo, what's good with it, y'all? It's your boy, Mr. Wilson. And you are now tuned in to Wilson Block 100 Radio, son. Yes, sir. Welcome back to Wilson Block 100 Radio with your boy, Mr. Wilson. And today, man, I'm going to talk about the 10-mile walk to prove that I could go the distance, okay? Now, this took place in 2013, and this was the walk that inspired my million-foot commitment for causes and charity, a commitment and pledge that we fulfilled, that I fulfilled. I fulfilled my bargain in uh, 2015. So it started in 2013, ended in 2015. And the million foot commitment, you know what I'm saying, was pretty much just a commitment I made to walk a million feet. You know what I'm saying? For different causes and charity. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? We participated in different events and I even organized my own events. Okay. Uh, it all started with this walk. And since then, we participated in the Autism Speaks Walk. Uh, I believe that was 2014. We participated in the Walk to End Alzheimer's, which is actually uh, close to me. That's that's probably the most dearest cause to me that I've walked in, other than the ones that I've organized myself. Um, and then, you know, we were trying to do the, the Avon 39-mile walk for breast cancer, um, which I don't think they're really doing the 39-mile walk anymore. But anyway... 
you know, I'm going to give you the story about the 10 mile walk to prove that I can go the distance. And uh, listen, we're only going to play one more song in this show so I can, uh, you know, have a little more time to talk about this because I only do this in 15 minute, you know what I'm saying, shows. So without further ado, in October 2013, man, I remember I was homeless. You know what I'm saying? I was broke. I was hungry. I was living in a friend's car. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, I woke up one day with uh, nothing to do, nowhere to go. Uh, it was a weekend. I believe it was a Saturday. It was, I believe it was a Sunday. And, you know, for someone like me at that time, you know what I'm saying? Places are closed. There's nowhere for me to really go. So I kind of found myself sitting around all day, chilling in the park. Even the libraries kind of have funny hours, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, I, I just I, I just had a very, very, very ordinary day. Not extraordinary, very ordinary, you know what I mean? And what I did was uh, I didn't like that, you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, the next week comes, you know what I'm saying? The, the, it's a consecutive Sunday that comes. I'm in the same situation, only this time I com- I'm convinced that I'm not about to have another ordinary day. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I, you know, get dressed as, as best as I can. And I had these posters in my hand and I walked to Lake in Washington and I start putting my posters up everywhere. I walk all the way down Lake to Cordova. You know what I'm saying? Putting up my posters on both sides of the street. And I just had just so much energy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I come back. You know what I'm saying? Uh, up late, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, because by the time I hit Cordova, I run out of posters. So I march back up late pretty strong, you know what I'm saying? I get to the Fool for Less, and I see that a poster of mine was torn down. So I boss up in the Fool for Less, and I just take the floor, and I'm just, I just tell everybody right there, man, listen, if you tear down my poster, if I catch anybody tearing down my poster, I will not understand, you know what I mean? And I stormed out of there, went back, and kind of had a, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, a bad rest of the day, you know what I'm saying? I'm just gonna put it like that. But uh, actually, that was that was the actual first day, you know what I'm saying? So the consecutive Sunday, what ended up happening was when I woke up and, and, and saw I was in the same situation, I had posters and I hopped on the 180 bus, you know what I'm saying, on Lake in Washington and took it all the way to Hollywood. I'm just saying, okay, let me just see where the day takes me, you know what I'm saying? I, I take it all the way to the end, I, I get off on Vine and I start walking down Hollywood Boulevard towards La Brea. And I'm just putting up my posters, you know, maybe I might bump into somebody or who knows, you know, I get to La Brea and, you know, I'm like, well, you know, I still got posters. Let me just go ahead and hit up La Brea real quick. So I start walking down La Brea and I just keep going down La Brea, you know what I'm saying? Until I reach like Pico or Venice, you know what I'm saying? Once I reach Venice, you know, I run out of posters, you know what I'm saying? And now, you know, I'm smack dab in the middle of Pasadena and Inglewood, you know what I'm saying? In Inglewood, I have some relatives uh, living over there, so... You know, if I were to continue on to Inglewood, I, I did have a place to touch down. You know what I mean? And then, um, you know, I started to think about it like, well, I'm not trying to go back to Pasadena right now. And, uh, you know, I, you know, remembered, you know, I would take the 212 bus, you know what I'm saying, from Hollywood to Inglewood when I would go see my, my relatives over there. Um, so I, I was pretty confident that I knew the way there on foot. You know what I mean? I just kind of forgot the terrain that I would have to go through. I thought it would be kind of dangerous, um, but I wasn't really afraid. You know what I mean? As, as I thought I might have been. Anyway, um, so I'm like, man, I'll just continue down the bridge to, to my relative's house in Inglewood. You know what I'm saying? And I'm walking, man. I get to Overhill Drive and I'm, 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 I have to cross. I have to, you know what I mean? Walk through Overhill Drive. You know what I'm saying? And I almost got hit by a car a couple times, you know? And, uh, you know, I was going through a lot of emotional stuff at this time, dealing with girls and, you know what I'm saying? You know, the struggle, you know what I mean? But uh, I just remember walking up Overhill Drive, you know what I'm saying? I was in some security booths for, because, you know, I was trying to, I was applying for jobs and stuff like that. And uh, I just remember thinking, like, you know, I just I just got to prove to myself that I can go the distance. You know what I'm saying? Even though I'm struggling, even though I'm having a bad day, a rough time, you know, I just have to prove to myself that I can go the distance. I know I can make it. You know what I'm saying? I, this is See, the 10-mile walk to prove that I can go the distance is something that, you know, I had to prove to myself. You know what I'm saying? This is It wasn't really, you know what I'm saying, for anyone else's benefit. You know what I mean? Uh, so sure enough, you know what I'm saying, I get through Overhill Drive. I make it to La Brea and Sentinella. My relatives live right around the corner. And I made it there. Bam! You know what I'm saying? And, uh, 
you know, I finally get to, uh, uh, you know, I, I finally end up taking the bus back to Pasadena and the next day. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, I just really walked it. Let me see how much, let me see how long that was. You know what I'm saying? And come to find out it was only 10 miles. You know what I'm saying? I didn't plan on doing this. You know what I'm saying? And uh, after that, I was very inspired. I was like, if I can go 10 miles, I can go 20. And then, you know, we start with the 27-mile walk. You know what I'm saying? We'll go ahead and get some more of this local music. I want to thank y'all for tuning in. It's your boy, Mr. Wilson. Yeah, yeah. Job in Portland that made you split up. 